happened, what failed there. Um, you want to have an informed culture so the people who are operating and managing the system have knowledge about the factors that are affecting the system. You want to have a reporting culture, and this is what we're talking about when we talk about non-putative reporting. People can report safety concerns. They can report errors that they've made and near misses. And a just culture, so people are encouraged and rewarded for providing safety information without fear or blame. Um, if you have an effective safety culture, it's flexible. It can change, it can adapt, and um, a learning culture. So you've got to be able to have the willingness and the competence to get those lessons learned, to draw them, to change things. It's not something that's going to happen overnight, and there's going to have to be a lot of confidence building measures that take place with the employee workforce so they're full, full participants in this culture so that they, uh, they, they feel like they own it and they feel like they're a partner. And that's why our recommendations, both to the Federal Transit Administration to establish the system wide across the country and to Metro, talk about all of the pieces, all of the pillars that really need to be involved to make this a success. If you're not getting a lot of calls on your safety hotline, people, aren't, people aren't, don't have confidence in it and they're not using it. When we look at an airline with a robust reporting culture for pilots, they get 10,000 reports a year. I wonder how many calls they get on the safety hotline. I don't know, Mr. Salz may want to answer that, and he also may want to respond to, to Ms. Hersman's notion of, of sounds like a classic stove part, stove, uh, a, a, a stove pipe culture, where the maintenance did not know uh, about uh, the the issue she described. Is that has that been remedied? Uh, Certainly there's a lot of silos uh, in Metro, and as I said before, we've started on the path to remedying those things. I will never sit here at this point and say it's all been remedied. We've got a long way to go. I will agree that um, when that safety culture is in place and when there's a trust that uh, is referred to before, the f there'll be actually, in my view, less need for a safety hotline because if there's truly a trust between the workers and the managers and the feeling that information could be shared without retribution, then people will not have to be a whistleblower and they will not have to use the safety line, but it's gonna take a long time to get there. In the meantime, with those tools available, at least if someone feels there's gonna be retribution, they have a channel to do it, and if they call the safety hotline, uh, the uh, call is treated anonymously. Uh, Mr. DiBernardo, I have a question for you, but I think I'm going to defer to Mr. Bilbray now, who hasn't had the opportunity to, answer, to ask any questions. Just, um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, what, is the, um, what is the headways during uh, the uh, rush hour? It's around three minutes, depends on Three long. minutes, three minutes. Is every he heavy rail in the country operating with an automated system with, um, and with a manual override? Uh, generally, the systems in this, most systems in this country are manual. They don't have automatic train operation. Uh, WMATA was more advanced than that. Uh, well, let me, let me answer that and come back. Uh, because I know that BART, when um, we, when I was involved in the transit system, uh, I ran into BART and a couple others um, that really questioned the automated system for a safety reason, mostly because of the relationship between humans, the attention span of humans and when they go down. Um, are you saying that the majority of heavy rail operators in this country are operating with a manual operation and then um, because I, what I, let me just say this and allow you to sort of counter it. I was told that the safer system would have been a manual operation with electronic um, override because the fact is the human, when they're not engaged, it will not have the attention span to engage. When you need them, they're not going to be there, would basically be the argument. I want to open that up. I know this is an issue that all of us in transit go bounce.